the XRP Ledger is undergoing multiple upgrades that are going to catapult it into the forefront of Web3. The Axelar integration and their new Mobius stack is very important to understand. We just got out of a space on Twitter with Jazzy Cooper and representatives from Axelar. And I think this is five minutes that will greatly benefit you to listen to. Five minutes to bring you value, five minutes for you to understand what's happening now on the XRP ledger with the Ripple X dev team. Check it out. Um, so a lot going on on the XRPL um, with a big focus on on-chain finance, institutional rails. Um, you know, one of the reasons we're excited to partner with Axelar is that at the heart of interoperability is really acceptance that no chain does it all or can do it all. And so XRPL may not, may not be the best place for, you know, boundless innovation with, with you know, turning complete smart contracts, but what the chain can do, it can do really, really well and best in class uh, in a way that's reliable, secure, efficient, uh, in, you know, in a way that institutions will, will require in order to bring their business and uh, more importantly, their customers on chain. So that's where we're looking really closely, you know, starting with tokenization of how can you not only represent crypto native assets very well, whether they're from, um, you know, one chain or another, but also uh, real world assets and ensuring that there's token standards that support these assets well um, and also can be, you know, very easily accessed with a simple API call as opposed to having to build your own smart contracts from scratch, which really lowers the barriers for uh, Web2 developers, TradFi developers uh, as well. But, you know, once you tokenize that asset, what do you do next? And that's where uh, XRPL really shines, which is payments, trading, value transfer. Um, so we're very excited to, you know, team up with Axelar and um, not only allow real world assets to, to come and go and access different, different chains, but also to access, you know, the, the you know, highly robust order book uh, exchange on XRPL um, and, and vice versa. We'll be tapping into smart contracts on the EVM sidechain that, that we're launching as well. So, you know, we've partnered with a, a lending pr protocol recently that's built uh, on the EVM sidechain that's in dev right now. Um, and that will be fully accessible from XRPL mainnet. So users can access those DeFi protocols without having to, um, you know, switch into another wallet on another chain, creating a really seamless um, and, and sort of comprehensive user experience. So those are, those are a couple of things. I know you mentioned stablecoin as, as well. That's, um, you know, on the horizon and, and should help to amplify DeFi on, on XRPL as well as, um, you know, real world asset settlement. So a lot, a lot of exciting stuff there. I mean, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, you know, I think nobody would argue that like tokenization is one of the biggest kind of product market fits in the industry, right? And you mentioned um, standards around what it actually looks like once you launch a token, you know, how do you incorporate, you know, payments and other instruments? What are types of requests you see from, you know, traditional financial institutions, like kind of larger players? Uh, yeah, you mentioned some of it, like once the asset is launched, but like, can you tell us what is the ecosystem and the kind of tool set looks like and what are the asks that you typically see? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. So there's two main fungible standards on the XRPL that will be used by institutions. The first is is IOUs, and that's really kind of the original stablecoin model of, um, you know, you have a balance of uh, basically minus one on chain, and I have a balance of, of plus one off chain. So IOU $1 and you have a stablecoin, and that's sort of the base model. Uh, the next is uh, something called multi-purpose tokens that the team is working on, which will allow um, issuers to attach metadata directly to the fungible token, uh, which is really helpful when you think about tokenizing bonds uh, and, and different types of real world assets where you want that information to be connected at the token level as opposed to, <clears throat> excuse me, at the issuer level. Um, the other piece that we're seeing, uh, you know, rise a lot and, and, and really come under scrutiny is, is on-chain compliance. And so, uh, we're working on a number of different on-chain compliance standards and, and features to really ensure that, um, you know, issuers can meet regulatory standards uh, and, you know, bring assets on-chain, allow them to trade. So, uh, you know, whether it's controls at the token level of who can hold a particular token uh, set by the issuer or even at the protocol level of, you know, creating bounds around uh, a trading environment um, for a permissionless asset. 
uh, we're trying to really meet them at, at every level um, so that they can can not only tokenize, but, uh, but access the DeFi protocols and, and the value transfer as they need to uh, while remaining compliant. That's awesome. And within the RWA category, what are the classes of assets that you're excited about? Yeah, that's that's a good question. I mean, we're seeing a lot of traction with uh, T bills and, and money market funds. Obviously, um, you know, one of one of the big use cases that we're seeing, which really excites me because it, it, it taps into DeFi, and we're starting to take that step beyond. Okay, I've brought this asset on chain, but now w- what do I do with it? And so. Uh, looking at use cases along the lines of collateralizing, you know, treasury bills, money market funds, and allowing, um, you know, traders to to access leverage to trade crypto native assets. So uh, we're really starting to see the the ecosystem come together. Um, I think, you know, other other classes like private equity allowing um, advantages on both the you know fund side as well as the buyer side by lowering lowering barriers to entry allowing long tail investors to tap into private equity funds is a new opportunity without the massive spike in operational costs for some of those private equity funds to be able to manage a long tail investor. So, um, you know, capabilities like that and, and fractionalization are really helping, you know, both both sides of the ecosystem, which is, um, you know, huge value prop of blockchain and, and what I love to see.